A quick five hour drive is all that separates Chicago from Toledo, Ohio. Why Toledo, you might ask? Well, there's a card room called Deep Stacks that caught my attention. Check it out. What's up you guys welcome back to another video here in ohio in toledo at deep stacks casino we're playing a one two meetup game but it's match the stack probably gonna get pretty crazy let's get right into the hands let's go it's a one two game and i matched the largest stack at the moment for four hundred dollars we kick off the night just after 7 p.m and i look down at seven five of hearts from the hijack middle position opens it up to eight Aton in the low jack puts in the call and i do as well that leads us to a flop of king queen nine with two hearts Oton decides to bet out for $15. I put in the call with my seven high flush draw and so does middle position as well. That leads us to a turn which doesn't improve my hand at all. It comes the deuce of diamonds. Middle position checks over to Otan. He continues for $40 into the $69 pot and uh, I'm not going to fold just yet. These people came out to make the vlog. I'm going to give them the chance to do so. I put in 40 bucks, and middle position gets out of the way. We're going to need a heart on the river, but we do not get it. It's a board pairing nine of clubs. But when Otan slows down and checks on this board pairing nine, I have some interesting ideas. If I check behind, I'm almost certainly losing to any of his better heart draws, like ace 10 of hearts. Even that has me beat. Whereas if I bet large here, I can probably get Oton to fold a lot of his ace high draws as well as his random pocket pairs, maybe even getting him to fold a hand as strong as queen 10 or queen jack, which would be a huge win. So when he checks it over to me, I posture for a second before cutting out $120 with two hands. Yes, the two handed bet. Is that strength? Is that weakness? You guys can let me know down below. Oton decides it's weakness in this moment and he puts in the call and turns over ace king suited. Yes, that $120 bet did not work that time he can't be folding top top and just like that i'm stuck nearly 200 dollars after a bluff gone bad it is a match to stack game so i'm able to top up for an additional 500 dollars i'm sitting with 700 in my stack appreciate it thank you man da, 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 da. john cena <laughs> Job. An awesome guy by the name of Derek buys me a blue moon and then we're on to the next one. We look down at king queen offsuit from middle position. Derek opens it up to $20 and Otan puts in the call. I gotta raise it up here. I'm gonna go 4x all the way up to 80 bucks and both of them call. So yeah, no scared money here. They both put in the call and that leads us to a flop in position which comes jack eight five rainbow. Derek checks it over to Otan. Otan does not believe in checking over to the pre-flop raiser. He bets out for $45. Obviously I could fold my king queen high here, but I decide actually to float one time and put in the call. If I hit a king or queen on the turn, we're probably gonna be good. There's a lot of straight draw cards that would give us an open-ended straight draw, like a 10, and the ace would give us a gutter to Broadway. So yeah, floating here isn't the worst play in the world, and Derek puts in the call as well, which improves our odds to improve. When the turn comes to six of clubs, Derek checks once again. Otan fires out for $120, and just like that, the gig is up for me. I'm not putting in any more money. When I don't pick up any additional equity, Derek folds as well, and uh, $375 going Otan's way. What a run he's on. Okay, we're going to battle in this next one with queen 10 of spades. I'm in the low jack and the small blind opens it up to $20. When two players put in the call, I could be going for the re-raise. Instead, I just put in the call looking to hit a straight flush. Does that come on the flop? Of course not, but it comes jack 9, 8, bang, we flop a straight. No straight flush, but a straight is just as good for me. I decide to lead out into the field for $30. If I check it over to them and go for the check raise, that's also a good play. However, I just decided to put money in the middle, giving the small blind or the hijack the ability to re-raise me and put more money in the middle. I bet out for 30 and both players put in the call. No one goes for that raise. And we see a turn card, which comes the deuce of diamonds. Doesn't change anything. I still have the nuts, although it does improve anyone with some backdoor diamond draws. Small blind checks it over to me. Now, I'm obviously going to bet it's just a matter of how large. Do I go small? Nah, that doesn't seem so good. It gives other people a good chance to draw or make a better hand. 
So I think going large is the better play. $75 isn't exactly as large as I'd hope to go. I'd prefer somewhere around $120 to $150. $75 still gives them a great price. If they have a set, we want to just pile the money in considering we're around $500 effective at this point. Regardless though, $75 was the bet and it looks like they wouldn't have called anymore when both of them get out of the way. Just like that, I flopped myself the nuts. I gotta show the table because poker is an easy game. Please don't explode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's okay, I'll it. Cheers, Henry. Bang, baby, back at it again. <laughs> Can't get rid of this guy, even if I want to. <laughs> Bang! Next hand, we look down at 7 8 of clubs from the cutoff. Otan in the hijack puts in the limp. I raise it up to $15, and only he puts in the call, leading us to a flop, which comes 7 high, 7 6 3 with one club. 30 bucks in the middle when he checks it over to me. I decide to bet out for $15 once again, around half the size of the pot. Top pair is good. We have the back door straight and flush draw. And Otan decides to put in the call as well. We're off to a turn, which comes the jack of clubs. Obviously, we don't have top pair anymore, although we do pick up the eight high flush draw. Otan, though, he doesn't check it over to me. He actually decides to bet out for $55. A little bit strange, although he could be betting here so that I don't check behind. Seeing my exact hand, I don't think I would be checking behind. I'd probably pile more money in. However, there are a lot of hands that I actually would check behind with, so I don't hate his $55 lead into me. I'm not going to be raising, though. It's important to play your pair plus flush or straight draws as just the hand that you actually have in the moment. So I just have a pair of seven, so I decide just to put in the call, and let's see what a river card brings in. It's a black card, which we want to see, but it's the ace of spades. Improves that front door spade draw, not our back door club draw. Yeah, say that four times fast. Otan now decides to slow down and check. Having some showdown value myself, I decide to check back as well. And he turns over king 10 offsuit. That's just king high, my man. And I'm taking it down with my pair of sevens, finally shipping a pot my way. All right, 775 in my stack, the straddle's on, I'm in the hijack. Early position opens it up to $18, and the player in the low jack puts in the call. Obviously, putting in a call here could be fine. Instead, I take the more aggressive route and three bet them to $65. A guy in early position by the name of T-Town Dom. Yes, T-Town Dom, he puts in the call and that leads us to a heads up pot in position which comes king seven three with two spades. T-Town Dom checks it over to me and having a seven seems good to me. I bet out for $45 to which he says, yep, I'm putting in the call. I wanna see that turn card and it comes the Jack of Hearts. Dom checks it over to me, and having just one pair when he calls me on the flop, I decide to check behind. It's possible I could get a little bit more value from any of his spade draws. However, that's neither here nor there. I check behind, and that brings in the river, coming the deuce of clubs. Really shouldn't change anything. If I had a best hand on the flop and turn, I should have it by the river. However, Dom now leads out for $90. Interesting spot for me because obviously the busted spade flush draw. However, I just have third pair. At the same time, having a seven in my hand is pretty much the same as having a jack because I'm pretty much just calling a bluff or he's gonna have a king. Really wish I would have put in the call. Instead, I fold and just like that, he's gonna show me the bluff. Eight five of clubs though. So he didn't have busted spades. He has busted clubs somehow and he's gonna take down that $220 pot. Nice hand, Dom. <laughs> Show this. I was gonna say you need more than just a stage. <laughs> oh, what are you like a genius? Yeah, bro. It's my middle name. <laughs> We add on for an additional $500, so I'm sitting with a cool $1,000 in my stack. I look down at King Jack offsuit from the hijack. The straddle is on and under the gun opens it up to $30. Hijack puts in the call, actions on me. I could be three betting up to like 100 bucks. Instead, I just put in the call leading us to a flop which comes king high. King nine deuce with two spades and under the gun is first to act. He decides to continue for $30 and the hijack gets out of the way. Could I be raising here? Sure, I'd be raising to protect my hand against any of the spade flush draws. I'd also be raising to get value from worse kings like king 10, king 8, obviously king 9 has two pair, but calling has a lot of merit as well when I don't three bet my hand pre, so I decide just to put in the 30 bucks leading us to a turn. When the turn comes a 6 of spades, it's not a welcome card because now any of his draws get there and he continues for $55 which is really small. Considering he raised under the gun, he also have some strong kings in his range like king queen, ace king, and even pocket kings. 
So when he bets for $55, I can't be getting out of the way just yet. I have to put in the call, but there's no sense in raising. $55 from me goes into the middle, and that brings in the river card, which comes the ace of diamonds. An even worse card, because now any of his naked ace highs on the turn that you had a spade flush draw, like if you had ace 10 with the ace of spades, ace jack with the ace of spades, now have me beat by the river. Although I am in position, so I get to see what he does. If he continues here, it's going to be a tough spot and hard for me to call. And that's what he decides to do. He bets out for $130. Like I said, this ace is definitely a bad card because it improves a lot of hands that I had beat. Now I'm losing to any two spades, any hand with an ace in it, or any of the better kings, including two pair with kings. So $130 seems too steep for me to call when he bets all three streets. I muck my cards. Shelby mucks his cards face down, so we'll never see what he had, although I think I made a good fold in this moment. 925 in my stack, the straddle's on, I'm in the cutoff, two limps to me, and I look down at ace queen offsuit. I raise it up to $20 and the button puts in the cold call. Selby from under the gun now raises it up to $75. Yes, he limped under the gun and then re-raises it to $75. Pretty strange line and pretty indicative of a strong hand. You just don't see this play too often. Obviously, I can't be folding with my ace queen offsuit. I could be going for a four bet. I heard that's a pretty cool play to do with ace queen off. Instead, I just put it in the call. The button gets out of the way and we're off to a flop which comes ace high ace nine four rainbow and selby continues immediately for 65 dollars flopping top pair is good for me it's a welcome sight and i put in five chips indicating a call to the dealer bringing in the three of clubs on the turn actions on selby and he doesn't slow down a bit he bets out for 130 dollars this turn card doesn't really change anything if i'm behind a hand like pocket aces ace king Maybe a set, although I don't think he'd limp three bet pocket fours or pocket nines, so it's pretty much ace king, aces, or just a random pocket pair. I decide to put in the call. I can't be folding a hand as strong as ace queen off. 130 more into the middle for me, bringing the pot up to $565. The river card comes a brick, it comes a five of hearts. I'm in position to Selby and he bets out now for $225. My immediate thought is put in the call. You can see I grab a stack of green chips. I was just going to toss that into the middle. But after asking the dealer for a count and learning it's $225, it's just such a strong line. He limp re-raises preflop and then bets all three streets into me on an ace high board. He's representing a hand like ace king or aces or a set. Just The sets just don't make too much sense. I actually make a fold in the moment and I'm pretty disgusted that I did. I turned him face up and without even seeing his hand just yet, I think this is a bad fold. I gotta be putting in the call. $225 to win almost 800 bucks. I gotta be putting in the call and he confirms my suspicions when he turns over pocket tens. Yes, he went for the bluff. Not sure why he bet on the river considering he bet flop and turn with no draws and I called him on the flop and turn. Still, I can't critique the guy when he won the pot, right? He's taken down that $565 bet and at my meetup games, I just gotta call him down more. I learned a valuable lesson here. Feel free to roast me in the comments. So we got Otan here. He drove three hours from Columbus. Otan, how do we say bang in uh, Japanese? Bang! <laughs> <laughs> if anything can get me out of my rut, I look down at pocket sevens, my favorite ham from under the gun. Straddles on and I raise it up to $20 and the player in the plus one puts in the call. Henry in the low jack now decides to re-raise and three bet me to $85. When the action comes back around to me, I will be folding a lot of my pocket pairs like sixes and fives in this spot, but sevens is just too good and it's my favorite hand. I'm not getting away from it just yet. I put in the call. And the flop comes eight, five, three, rainbow. The action's on me. I'm obviously gonna start with a check. Action's over to Henry and he decides to bet almost one fourth the size of the pot, to which I can't fold just yet. I have a pair, maybe some backdoor straight ideas. I put in the 50 bucks, leading us off to a turn which comes the three of clubs. Pairs the bottom card, so actually a pretty great card for me. A lot of his ace and king highs I still have beat. I check it over in flow, and he checks behind, so I'm putting him on an ace or king high type hand. The river card now comes the ten of diamonds. I don't think betting accomplishes too much. If I bet out, he's just going to fold a lot of those hands. If I check it over to him, he could go for a bluff, and I could pick that off. So when I check it over to him and he checks behind, he turns over ace king offsuit. So that's one of those hands I was definitely going to pick off by the river. But instead, I'm going to get rewarded with that $300 pot, which feels equally as good.
chip stack is increasing ever so slightly. I look down at 5-4 of clubs from the low jack. I have 800 in my stack. In the middle position, blind raises it up to $20. The action folds over to me, and because he raised blind, I'm going to 3-bet him to $65, to which he doesn't look at his cards, but instead puts in the equivalent red chips, indicating a call, and we're off to a flop. Heads up to a flop, which comes queen 9-3 with two diamonds, and he checks it over to me without looking at his cards. I decide to check behind, there's all red cards out there and not really too much going for me. If I bet, he's probably just gonna call me blind anyways. So I decide to take the free card and check behind, bringing in the seven of clubs. So now the seven of clubs improves me to a gutter to a straight. So when he checks it over to me for a second time, I now retake the betting lead and bet out for $45. He tosses in one black chip, that's a call. He's gonna get $55 back. And that brings us to a river which comes the ace of spades. He continues to play blind and checks it over to me in flow. And uh, having just five high on this board, I decided to bet out for $125. My reasoning, I just have five high. It'd be pretty cool for the vlog if I get this bluff through. And even though he could have any two cards and sure he could have a queen and call me, sure he could have an ace and call me, the odds of him having those are pretty small, but the odds of him having me beat with just five high are actually pretty high. So betting 125 here makes a lot of sense. I get the fold from him and I'm gonna show the table that I came to play. Made that fold earlier with ace queen off, but uh, I get a little bit of redemption here with the five high bluff. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but I had the bluff. <laughs> I had five high. I had five high. I told, I told you. You had me beat though. If, if I check, if I, I lose. If I hit any pair in there, I'm calling, I promise. If I check, I lose. What just happened, man? You gotta stop it. What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Can beat him on a double board. He's beating his own players. He's beating his. He, he's inviting yeah, the one hand I don't out. film. Hey, I, yeah. I knock a dude that drives fine, me. Hey, from Cleveland. He finally played a hand good. Speaking of playing a hand good, we're gonna get into it here with Micro Mike and let's see if I can get some of his chips. I'm on the button and the $10 straddle is out. There's one call to the cutoff, AKA Micro Mike, and he opens it up to $65. I put in the call on the button, I'll have position and I'm drawing to the nuts if two spades come out there. The small blind puts in the call as well. Just like that, we're going three ways to the flop. With 195 out there, the flop comes ace, eight, deuce with two clubs and the small blind checks it over to Mike. He bets out for $115 now, which is kind of strange. Sure, he raised preflop, so he could have those strong aces. However, he also could just have some random draws, so I put in the 115, having top pair myself, and the small blind gets out of the way. When the turn card comes, the three of hearts, and Mike now slows down and checks. I don't really think there's too much merit in going for value and betting here. Sure, I could get value from any of those club flush draws. However, if he's trapping with a hand like ace-10 through ace-king, he's just gonna snap me off here. However, if I check behind on this turn and the river card does not come a club, he could bluff into me and I'm obviously gonna have to snap him off. So that's what I decided to do. I decided to play it a little bit tricky with my top pair and I check it behind hoping for a clean river card. Come on dealer, let the plan come to fruition and sure enough it does, it comes a board pairing three of diamonds. What a great card for us to snap a bet off with, but I'm a little bit hesitant when he bets out for $350, nearly the size of the pot. However, I made that mistake with ace queen offsuit, not gonna let it happen twice in one night. So for that reason, I cut out $350 worth of chips, assemble them, put them into one hand and put them into the middle. Yes, that's a call. The pot has ballooned up to $1,100. It's time to show your cards, Micro Mike. He doesn't seem stoked to do so, so either this is the sickest slow roll or he just doesn't have a great hand, which I'm definitely hoping. He pushes the chips in my direction, but the table wants to see his cards. So I wait for him to show. He turns over the nine of diamonds. I turn over the nine of spades. He follows that up with the seven of diamonds. So he had nine seven suited for a complete nothing. I turn over that ace, which rewards me with that $1,100 pot. Just like that, our chip stack improving in the right direction. Up a few hundred, we're feeling pretty good. I look down at pocket queens, the ladies from the hijack. $10 straddles on and the big one puts in the call. My right raises it up to $50. Pocket queens is not gonna do well multi weight so I decided to raise them up to $240. That's obviously a misclick, right? Yeah, I actually grabbed too many chips. I wanted to make it 165, but instead of grabbing two green chips, I instead grabbed two black chips. So go straddle 50, 240. What a rookie move from me. To compound on my mistakes, the big blind now re-raises to 540. So yeah, you can see how this is getting out of control. If I make it 165, he probably raises a little bit less to like 400. Instead, because I made it 240, he's gonna raise it up to 540. Can't be folding my pocket queens. I put in a few extra black chips, but uh, 
This is a doozy of a hand already. Pop comes Jack 6 for Rainbow and the actions on the big blind to which he shoves all in for a thousand dollars. Sure he could have a hand like Ace King or Ace Queen, although I double block Ace Queen. So if it's a bluff, it's most likely Ace King. However, I don't really think he's gonna be four betting me preflop to the minimum. After I make it 240, he makes it 540. And then going all in out of position on this flop without a hand that has me beat. He even could have a hand like Pocket Jacks and now improved on this flop. So for that reason, I actually make a tight discipline fold and I fold my cards to Dom. Pocket Queens down in the muck. I don't wanna put in $1,000 if I'm behind. I'm really only beating Ace King or Ace King offsuit at the moment. He ends up turning over the King of Hearts, making it believable he could have Pocket Kings or Ace King. He later said he had Ace King. I don't really know if I believe him. I don't really know if I believe him, but that's a mystery he's gonna to take to his grave. Last hand of the night, and it's a good one. I look down at eight, seven of clubs from the hijack. Henry, our German buddy, he puts in the $10 button straddle and I raise him up to $35. He puts in the call. He didn't drive all the way from Michigan to be folding his button straddle. And we're off to a flop, which gives us top pair, eight, four, three, rainbow, to which I bet out for 21, like the rapper. And he likes that price. He puts in the call, bringing us to a turn. When the turn comes with seven of diamonds, giving me two pair. It's a great card. It also improves a lot of hands, like any ones that have two diamonds in it. Maybe hand like 910. The hand we don't want to improve is 56. So I continue for $55. If we get raised the tough spot, we're probably going to have to call the turn. Henry doesn't raise me though. He puts in the call and that brings in the jack of clubs on the river. Now I could be going for a little bit extra value. I could check it over to Henry or I could blocker bet here for like $20, which is what I decided to do in the moment. The benefits of blocker betting, it could get him just a call with a better hand, a better two pair or a set. It also could incentivize a lot of his bluffs to go for a raise. Additionally, he could just fold and then no one gets to see my cards. But in the moment, he decides to 9x me all the way up to $186. Like I said, these small bets induce players to go for crazy raises. We saw this in one of my Florida vlogs that happened, and now it appears it's happening again. However, could this be for value? Sure, he could have a set and be doing this. He could have some straights out there. At the same time though, I can't be folding two pair when I block the river. So eventually, I come to the right decision and put in the call. Henry turns over nine seven of hearts for just one pair. I turn over seven as well, but it's two pair mine front. I'm taking down that pot $558 coming my way and a great way to cap off the night. Ship those chips over to me, dealer. With that last hand in the books, it's time to rack up our chips and head over to the cage. All right, that wraps up that mini meetup here in Toledo at Deep Stacks. We got into that for 1200, which is way more than I wanted to. But we got out for 1500, thanks in part to this guy right here, punting right at the end. Caught that bluff with a 7 8 suited. He's got to drive all the way back up to Lansing, and I am crashing the night here. Tomorrow I'll be in Dayton at Mad River, so stay tuned, subscribe for that video. Like if you guys are in Ohio, guys, he's the chance. as always, good luck in the felt. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace! Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.